and welcome to the morning show right here on the new Main Street TV. And we appreciate you so much for tuning in and uh, spending your Friday morning or evening with us if you're watching the replay. All right, Jennifer here, of course, on this lovely sunny Friday to start off the show. And of course, that's always with our good friend Pete Wilson and the morning news update, which is brought to you by Nia Henry. Agent for Appalachia Realty, if you're looking to buy or sell, give Nia a call, 740-418-4135. And Nia, of course, will work hard for you. All right, Pete, it is Friday, and I know there was a very important game last night we'll get to, but what else is going on in the news? Well, you know what? I'm going to... I'm going to turn it around and we'll start with basketball for two reasons. Yes, there was a very important game last night and mm -hmm. there is an even more important game tonight. Oh, because the Vinton County right. Lady Vikings, they've already made history by going to the regional finals. They're going to try to make even more history by qualifying for the state tournament. And that is Junior Cameron Zinn. She is only one of the many talented Vinton County Lady Vikings who uh, are rewriting the sports history books. Uh, for Vinton County High School, uh, of course, in the regional semifinal, a big victory over a big victory over the Tri Valley Scotties tonight at seven o'clock at Zanesville High School. The Vinton County Lady Vikings coach Rob Bentley's crew will be going up against the Thornville Sheridan Lady Generals, ranked number one in the state according to the polls, number one seed in our district. Those two teams will clash. Of course, the radio will be there. WYRO ninety eight point seven FM. And, of course, you know, through, uh, through the Internet as too, through our total media app, which, uh, you know, was getting a lot of play and will continue to get more play, makes it so easy to, uh, to listen to these ball games and to see these ball games. But the game tonight, the winner will go to the state tournament, which this year is in Dayton. Uh, it's supposed to have been in St. John's Arena, but, you know, there's still the restrictions on the crowds there. Uh, more so, I guess, than in Dayton. So we'll be going over to Dayton, we hope. Uh, but the Sheridan Lady Generals will not be easy to beat. As we said, ranked number one in the state, they defeated Win Wintersville Indian Creek in their semifinal game also this past Tuesday. Mm -hmm. They have a young lady by the name of Faith Stinson, who uh, is one of the best college recruits in the country, She's they say. She's a tall drink of water. She is. I'm, <laughs> I'm guessing she is because she scores a lot of points and she gets a lot of rebounds. Yep. And she is going to the University of Michigan. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I'm going to sound like, a, sound like I'm a defensive appellation. If you're really good from around here, you have to be really <laughs> – if you're really good from around here, you better be doubly good for the big colleges to want you. Because they automatically think that you're playing small schools, inferior competition, and yep. uh, so they take a long look at you before they recruit you. And she already has been signed, sealed, and delivered to That's the University amazing. of Michigan, which has a good women's basketball program. Pete, I thought you were going to say if you were from around here and agreed to go to Michigan – Oh, well, I was kind of thinking he was going to go down that path too, but we'll forgive her for signing with Michigan. Uh, well, maybe they were maybe they were on the recruiting trail first, or or what, or maybe, maybe. she just likes maize and blue rather than scarlet and gray. Maybe uh, it, it's hard for me to explain that now, but uh, hey, nonetheless, it, it does happen. It's pretty impressive, and honestly, you know, we all become Lady Vikings today. And support those girls because they have done some amazing, amazing things. And they are bad A girls. Hey, I tell Proud you what, they, they have just been taking care of business all season long. Yep. Uh, beating teams by, uh, by large margins. Only loss was to Dublin Kaufman, which is a school probably about five times their size. <laughs> So, that doesn't uh, count. They were <laughs> in that game. Fair. They were in that game before they lost. So, And Dublin Kaufman is very good. They're just not very big. They're very good. So, anyway, we'll see what happens. Last night, unfortunately, the tournament trail ended for our Jackson Ironmen. Yeah, uh, 40 to 37 to the Gallia Academy Blue Devils. That is Logan Miller uh, in white. He's an Ironman. He's going up over uh, the 6'8 center for the uh, Gallia Academy <laughs> Blue Devils, Whoa. who is actually uh, even a better football player than he is a basketball player. He's only a sophomore. He's 6'8", 275 pounds. What? And supposedly he already has Division One interest in football. However, in basketball, yes, he was a heavy wow. load last night. I'd say fourteen points, eleven rebounds, and he, I think, singularly was the difference in the game.
because the Ironmen uh, were just off shooting. Uh, they couldn't make them long. They couldn't make them far. They have been able to win games in the fourth quarter with the game on the line, and it just didn't happen for them last night. Give credit to Gallia Academy. They were the underdog. They were. They defeated Hillsboro. They were the underdog against them, too. Mm -hmm. uh, Hillsboro and Jackson were, by the way, co-champs in the Frontier Athletic Conference. So they will go on to play Unioto in the district final this Saturday. Uh, but the Ironmen and Coach Max Morrow, got to remember, look at the long picture, 16-4 and four record. This is after a 20-4 and four record last year. Two very good seasons back-to-back. A Frontier Athletic Conference championship and a sectional championship. And four juniors who see a lot of playing time will be back next year. All during a global pandemic. Right. They did this all during a, a global <laughs> pandemic. And some people actually got to see it. Uh, I think there was a little bit more people there than there was last night. They are allowing 25% capacity yep. on uh, these sporting, these indoor sporting events now. Okay, and turning to COVID-19, another great report from the Benton County Health Department. It's getting to be old hat, we almost expect it. Uh, there, the number isn't there, but the big number is zero on the, uh, that could be on that infographic. That's how many new cases there were in Benton County. Six days, one case is the way I have calculated it, uh, trying to keep track of it on a day-to-day -day basis. There are only three active cases in Benton County right now. Two people are hospitalized. There hasn't been a death in at least three weeks. No new report from the Jackson County Health Department, but as we have said here on TV uh, the last several weeks, trending very positively here as well. Uh, one of the big uh, news updates on COVID-19 is the fact there is another place to get the vaccine. And the more places that you can get a vaccine, uh, the quicker it's going to happen, the easier it is, provided, of course, major asterisk that the supply comes in. But right now it is taking place at several locations. The newest location is the Jackson Walmart Supercenter. Of course, they have a pharmacy there, and Walmart has agreed uh, on a national level to dispense the vaccine, especially in areas where it's needed the most. And this in, in southeastern Ohio, that is one of those areas. Starting Thursday, this is when you can start getting the COVID-19 vaccine. You can also get it in the area at super centers in Galapagos, Athens, New Boston, Waverly, and Chillicothe. All you have to do is go online and make an appointment. Now, it's just not walk in, anybody can get it. Whatever phase the High Department of Health is in, that means that you should be able to get an appointment at Walmart. Right now, of course, it's 60 and older. Mm -hmm. And we talked about those other folks that are eligible for the vaccine right now. Uh, police officers um, police officers are in that category. People with certain medical conditions are in that category. Social service workers in that category. All those things are listed. Don't have them in front of me now. But if you were eligible to get the vaccine because of your age or your condition or your occupation, you can now... Sign up at Walmart uh, online. Uh, if you go in the store and try to do it, I'm not sure whether you can do it or not. doesn't say you can, but uh, over at the Walmart Supercenter, that's the place, uh, one of the places that you can go now. And when you get the first vaccine, they'll schedule you for the second one. Right. COVID pop-up testing rem reminder for the Wellston, uh, at Wellston at the Jackson County Fairgrounds tomorrow, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, the COVID pop-up testing, of course, is free. Uh, no referrals needed from a doctor. Uh, as long as they have testing supplies, you'll be able to get tested if that is still a concern of yours. Uh, this is the first COVID pop-up testing site that I can remember in Jackson County. There's been all over the state and in the area, but I believe that this is the first one in Jackson County. And I'll backtrack just a little bit on the Walmart one. You don't need to have insurance. You don't have to pay anything. Uh, no red tape or anything there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're worried about that part, Totally free. You just have to sign up for it online. Okay, one of the big stories this week that we'll be reporting in uh, Saturday's paper, we talked about this before it happened. We're going to talk about it after it's happened. That is the opening of the Men's Addiction Recovery Campus by the Warriors for Christ. There is a look at the building on the outside. Some folks may recognize it. It used to be the Heaven Bound Bookstore uh, at 10827 Chillicothe Pike. And Justin and Jamie Oyer, uh, that is a husband-wife team. There is Justin there uh, in the photo on the screen. Uh, he is the one, along with his wife, Amy, that made all this happen. He is a recovered addict himself. Uh, this is the second major part of, uh, I think he would uh, 
I think he would agree to call it a ministry on his part because Christ, uh, it's a Christ-centered program. He's been very big on that part as well as his personal experience with addiction and how to beat it. But uh, Justin and Amy have the Hope Center over on Mound Street. This was an outpatient counseling addiction treatment center. The big thing about the addiction recovery campus, which is not too far from the Hope Center, by the way, is that it is a residential center. You're going to have more chance to work with those folks. And there are some of the folks that are uh, part of the addiction recovery campus. We're talking about the Oyer, uh, Justin and Jamie Oyer. They're in that picture. Family members are in that picture. Colleagues are in that picture. People who are working with them out there. As you can see, very nice lobby area there at the recovery campus. There is room for 16 males right now. They're going to go real slow. They took their first one in yesterday, I understand. And there's going to be different terms as far as the length of stay, it depends on what you need. It can be short term, it can be longer term. Uh, they were able to do this uh, really through uh, the, uh, a, a drive, a personal drive that the Oyers had to do it. Uh, they got a big grant to help them get it. They got the donation of the former Heaven Bound Christian bookstore owner to get the property. That was big. And you no, know, they are in operation now. And we will be, um, we will be profiling that uh, with an article in tomorrow's paper. Phil Buffington has finished that up, and I think it'll be very informative about a problem that is that still continues to plague our county and really everywhere, and that is the problem of drug abuse and drug addiction, and this is a way to perhaps beat it. All right, so what else do we have? Uh, up, We're going to look north back to Vinton County again, and MacArthur Police Chief Matt Kite. Well, he used to be the MacArthur Police Chief, he resigned as of February the 24th. He is going to go to the uh, Gallia County Sheriff's Department in their court security division. That is Matt on the left, and he is getting a plaque of appreciation from MacArthur Mayor Steve Hammond there on our uh, photo showing on our monitors and TV screens. Uh, Matt uh, was very happy with what he was able to do uh, three years as the police chief in MacArthur. Uh, they modernized their vehicles. They modernized their technology. Uh, Mayor Hammond was very appreciative of his efforts on uh, behalf of the police department. Of course, we told you last week that Thomas Heaton, who had been the number two man there, he has been named interim police chief for a period of 60 days. So congratulations uh, to Chief Kite and the MacArthur Police Department. Another story out of MacArthur, uh, there is a culvert replacement project. I know that sounds pretty boring, but this is on U.S. Route 50, kind of right in the middle of MacArthur as you're heading out of town towards the high school and middle school and some of their new retail that is uh, uh, popping up over there by the high school, McDonald's and all over there, uh, and a new, the, the, the new uh, supermarket, Campbell's Grocery Store. The culvert replacement project is very important here because the culvert is deteriorating. They, of course, don't want it to collapse or anything. It is in pretty bad shape, but they're worried about traffic. They're worried about uh, you know traffic coming through on 50. They're worried about residential traffic going between the schools and the village and, 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 the, and the village downtown and the village's residential areas. They were hoping to do that project this summer and have it done before the end of, before school starts. However, this Tuesday at the commissioner's meeting, they got no bids on that. Uh, ODOT, of course, is working with the village and the commissioners on this. So they're going to hopefully rebid the project and maybe even have some bids in this Tuesday at the commissioner's meeting. So right now, that project depends on people coming forward wanting to do that culvert replacement project. Uh, pretty surprising they didn't get any bids on round one, but they'll tee it up and try it again next week. Some small stuff to tell you about or remind you about. Wellston School Board will be meeting tonight uh, in executive session on personnel employment matters, no action expected. Uh, down at Oak Hill at the Imogene Brunton Davis Memorial Building property, the Jackson County Health Department and the Gallia Jackson Vinton Solid Waste Management District will team up on a scrap tire day. Very hard to get very hard to get rid of tires because of the environmental rules. This is one time and place you can do it. This Saturday, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., you can get rid of your tires. They can even be on a rim. Now they can't come from a business, it has to come from a, a person. One dollar per tire. You can bring 10 tires at a time. That is the maximum load, but you can come with another load and another load and another load, but only 10 tires at a time, please. That's the rules. No tires from businesses. Again, that is 8 a.m. 
to 12 p.m. at the Imogene Brunton Davis Memorial Building on Front Street in Oak Hill. That's right on 93, of course. Today is the last day to purchase dog tags in Jackson County. We keep reminding you, today is deadline day. Uh, the Jackson DAV chapter, they count on their bingo. As a fundraiser, they are resuming their bingo games tonight. Uh, as, uh, of course, uh, you know, the restrictions on crowds are beginning to uh, are beginning to ease a little bit. However, masks are required, and I know they'll have the seating set up so it's safe as possible. The DAV is located at 170 Pearl Street in Jackson. Doors open at 5. They'll start yelling the bingo letters at 630. Mm -hmm. All right, the Hamden Firefighters will do uh, their annual chicken noodle dinner on Saturday. That's 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. This is a big fundraiser for them. They have big community events there. They have been, of course, hampered by the pandemic. This will be a drive-up carry-out chicken noodle dinner uh, and you needed to order ahead on that but you might check with them tomorrow and see if they have any left the girl scouts will be out selling cookies and taking donations as well and of course sunday jennifer if you want to be the jackson apple festival queen in 2021 that's the deadline to enter you need to fill out one of those entry forms that's that right. are at the high schools uh, or online and then get it to the apple festival uh organization building, which is on McCarty Lane, right across from the Walmart. Campus. Drive out the side entrance of Walmart there and you, you'll you run right into the building. Right. And uh, something interesting about that, um, because there is an age limit, I know, but if you had tried to enter last year, it's my understanding that you can enter this year. Right. Yeah. That, that Those limit. girls that tried last year and then they ended right. up canceling the contest. And that would be an age thing and that would be a grade thing. For instance, it's grades 10 and 11 that are eligible. Right. If you were in grade 11 last year and you wanted to try out, and they actually did the entry process last year, they just couldn't have the contest. Right. right. The time that the entries were in, you know, everything was starting to close down. So if you entered last year, uh, you can enter this year. However, they wanted to make it clear you need to enter again. Last year's entry won't do it. You're right, eligible. you have to show up and, right. and re-enter. Right, yeah. they, they're not taking the applications from last year. They're yep. just letting you know that you'll be eligible this year because of what happened last year. Yes. All right, so there you go, Jennifer. We'll turn it over to GM Amanda. All right, Miss Amanda is in the house. And we wore our matching shirts today because it's Friday and it's fun. Thank you, Pete Wilson. <laughs> and of course, Pete's morning news update brought to you by Nia Henry, agent for Appalachia Realty. If you are looking for any real estate needs, uh, for that matter, uh, buying, selling, questions, whatever it may be, give Nia a call, 740-418-4135, and she will be out working for you. All right, let's head on over to your Total Media Radio weather forecast where you can download that Total Media Radio app and get live local radio on your phone anywhere in the world, any time of the day, just by simply downloading that app. And uh, there you go, all four stations right there, super easy. And you can listen to the Lady Vikings on Mix 90, or, or uh, what is it, 98.7 tonight, right? 98.7, that's right. All right. So uh, make sure you download that. Then you'll have the Lady Vikings game loud and clear via the app. All right, your weekend weather forecast calls for, hey, we've got some sunshine. Look at that. Look at the little sun things up there. Isn't that so nice? Uh, sunny skies today. Highs around 44, but those wind chill values as low as 16 today. For tonight, mostly clear. Lows around 25. For your Saturday, mostly sunny, highs around 44, wind chill values as low as 25, and Saturday night clear, lows around 23. Looking on to Sunday, about the same, sunny skies, highs around 44 with those wind chill values as low as 23. Then looking uh, on to Monday, a little bit warmer, and then check out Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, mid-60s. Yes, we will take it. We will take it. We will take it. There's hope. There's Absolutely. hope. <laughs> Spring is in the air. <laughs> Woo! Hey, I do want to mention, too, though, that, um, you know, the streaming is nice and the app is nice. But sometimes when you're driving your car, you don't really want to fiddle with your phone because you shouldn't do that while you're driving. And if you have yes. one of those fancy fan-dangled cars that has Apple CarPlay. Okay. 
and you can bring up our app on Apple CarPlay. And listen to the the radio, all four radio stations. So if you're like my husband who wants to listen to Fox Sports, he wants to get, listen to his sports and we're driving somewhere. Yeah. Doesn't want to mess with his phone. You can pull up Apple CarPlay and listen to that anywhere. That is so cool. Once you drive out of the, um, the area, you can still listen to it. I have no idea what that is or how that works because, but that sounds really cool. Very cool. And what's it do? Let you play apps through the radio? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, like I don't have Apple CarPlay in my car, but I know that there are, there are a lot of, um, makes that carry Apple CarPlay now. It works in my, it works in my car and it, it, it is really convenient. It just, it essentially gives you the same interface that would be on your phone, but on your car, like nav screen. Okay. So instead of having to look at your phone, you're just tapping. So you can just pull up an app on like your phone. Yeah, basically. Okay. So would that be like for podcasts and everything? Like, yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so that's kind of neat. You get a podcast neat. app, and, and it, like if you subscribe to you know any other music system or music streaming services, they like they would show up there. Right. And, oh. a, and a lot of different d- depends on the make and model of your car. So like I have a Toyota, but we Toyota uses Toyota Intune instead of Apple CarPlay, so I don't have it's not available to me, but. Anybody who has the availability of Apple CarPlay in their car. Very neat. And very exciting. This week they're working on our Alexa skills. Um, uh, so when you can, you go and go home and you can say, hey, Alexa, play uh, 96.7 FM. And what? It'll come up on your Alexa device. Yeah, pretty exciting, huh? You know that we're, you just confused like, all the Alexas at everyone's house, right? Right. <laughs> They're like, "What? What is she talking about?" Yeah, so exciting. this happened to me the other day. Speaking of, I finally had to unplug her. She got so confused, and she went into this complete <laughs> rambling thing, and she would not stop talking, and she kept repeating herself over and over and over. And I was like, I kept saying, "Like, stop! Like, play." <laughs> this and play that and she just kept talking i've never had that happen before it's like she got Mm -hmm. stuck well maybe she was maybe she had been lonely and um (laughs) she needed some adult conversation i I mean i think she was drinking because my alexa is right beside the wine rack (laughs) i didn't count the bottles but i'm not sure but no i messed her up because i told her to like i was just thinking of like something to play so i asked her to play eagles radio Mm -hmm. because i was like just play some eagles songs right well then she went off on this tangent about nfl football and it was completely not making any sense so anyway well the eagles are an nfl football team correct but i'm not exactly (laughs) sure where eagles radio gets confused for eagles the right sports team team. Uh, they probably have their own radio network (laughs) Well, yeah, they could. Perhaps. They could. Yeah. Then she was talking about the Eagles of the West and then the Eagles of the East. And I was like, I, you're you're starting to concern me a and little bit. And then she say, now, did you want bald eagles? Yeah. Or- right. <laughs> Starts t- telling you about the migration habits of the right. North American bald eagle. So funny. Hey, I saw a very pretty lady last night. You did? I did. Your mom. Oh, I did. I saw uh, Phyllis and, and Davy at the Marquet last night. Yes, for the opening, the art opening for um, Megan. Yes, and Paul Brown. Yep, and uh, it was Megan Peters and Paul Brown. If you have an opportunity to stop into the Marquet and look at the art that these two fantastic artists have. Um, <laughs> or have on display, you just need to do it because they've just yes. done a fantastic job. And they are very, very different artists. <laughs> very different. Mm-hmm. You know, they have, they use a lot of the same mediums, but they um, have a, just a different, completely different style. And it's nice to see the contrast of the two. And Absolutely. It, uh, the opening was very well attended last night and um, it was very nice. Yeah, and that's so good. And it's, it's fun to have a, a show that has completely kind of contrasting um, styles. Megan, you know, Paul is is certainly much more, I guess you would say, very talented, but much more traditional. And Megan's uh, work is very quirky and very colorful and super duper uh, cool. So, 
<laughs> Courtney and I want want to to make a purchase. Um, uh, Megan's art piece called Cecily. Okay. We both want it. Oh. Our, neither of our husbands will, you know, necessarily shell out the cash for it. So we're thinking maybe we'll <laughs> buy it and then we will uh, share custody of her. Well, that or you could just fight to the death over it. <laughs> there you go. We could do a good old-fashioned <laughs> duel right here. Love at Cecily. The, we love oh, Cecily. Oh, isn't she so pretty? Yeah. And a lot of Megan's work is just like that. If uh, you're ever in Six Sense Brewing, um, she did the artwork in there uh, on the front walls as well. So yeah. pretty cool stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, and Paul does a lot of um, plain air art. So like he will take his paintbrushes and his knives and go out and just yes. sit in the open air and draw or paint um, the landscape. So he does a lot of that. And then a lot of Megan's is a lot more from just from her imagination. So yes, very yeah. cool. Very stuff. cool. So yeah. And the market is open. What is it? Uh, is it Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Friday? Thursday, Friday, 12 to five, 12 to five. So you can just Pop on in the in the gallery today and yeah, take a take absolutely. a look and and I know that they will do some appointments as well if you don't sure. feel comfortable you know just going during normal hours or maybe you have like a, a small uh, group uh, they'd be happy to talk with you about that as well right so very good so Miss Amanda you know not to bring this up or anything but you're leaving us I am but it's been postponed a little bit. Yeah, so today was actually supposed to be your last day. It was day. supposed to be my last day today. And we all cried and threw a fit, and she decided <laughs> to stay a little longer. There was a little snafu with the um, <laughs> with the background check, so. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. Are you a hardened criminal? We don't know I it. I am. I am, yeah. So, no, they, um, so the Ohio BCI sent my background check to the bank and then it got returned and then they sent it again and it got returned and then they've got it sent it again and it hasn't been received yet. So I'm, I'm kind of in limbo, <laughs> but I'm going to take the week and enjoy the fact that I've gotten a lot of things done and, and we can take next week and tie up some loose ends and there you go. It'll be nice. Well, we're happy to have you around yeah. as long as we can. Glad to be here, but you guys are going to be in great hands. We mm -hmm. need to get Karina up here at some point mm -hmm. um, and, and get her on air as well, because I think that uh, I think everyone will enjoy listening to her as well. That's right. Uh, very talented athlete and young lady. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, many, many of you have heard the name Karina Folks over the years. She was an Apple Festival queen. She was. As well as, um, uh, I think, state qualifier in track yep. and a uh, very, very talented girl. So Absolutely. Yeah. That'd be fun to talk about, reminisce a little bit about that stuff mm -hmm. too. Sure. Yeah. Very good. All right. So I saw, um, so, okay. I have to admit this to you because we all made fun of you for your grape salad. <laughs> <laughs> and so I saw this pop up online this morning and there is a um, celebrity chef named Jamie Oliver. Mm -hmm. And many of you yes. have heard of, of, uh, this individual um and celebrity chef jamie oliver has unveiled unveiled his recipe for his speedy sausage pizza and it was in in a uk episode of a cooking show okay um most of the ingredients were cool like sausage red onion and even pine nuts but then he finished it off by sauteing grapes and pouring it over the pizza hmm. to finish it. I think I might actually like that. So at first I'm like, grapes on a pizza, ew, ew. But then I started thinking about, he cooked these grapes down. You've got the sausage, you've got mm -hmm. the savory, you've got the fennel. Yeah. So you've got the savory and then, and then you, you add a little bit of sweetness. Yeah, to you add that kind of like, and I would Finish say it when they saute it, 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 it takes a lot of that it, liquid out of it. Yeah. And then might create maybe the, maybe the, 
the sugar in the grapes even caramelizes yes. a little bit. And so then, it would add that just mm. pop of sweet in there. I think that might be good. Um, so, but it, it just causes crazy controversy on like social media, of course, because people, <laughs> it's, um, as you can imagine, very polarizing. Oh, I'm sure. Now, we all made fun of your grape salad, and I will have to admit it was pretty tasty. So... I mean, I would okay. certainly dig into a sausage, onion, fennel, and, and grape, grape pizza. pizza. I would try it. Although I'm not a huge fan of fennel. I Very small doses very of fennel. Very small doses. Although yes. a lot of people don't realize, like, sausage is, is full of fennel. So, yes. um, but I don't like, um, it's very I, I enjoy Italian sausage, but if it has a lot of fennel in it. Yeah. Yes. It's very licorice -y, so yeah. it's it's... But, um, so yeah, so his online poll about grapes on a pizza came back with 65% of people said that it's not for them, and 17% um, chose the totally option. Like, yes, totally, I would do that. Um, someone wrote, the only grapes that should go with pizza are in red wine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not down with grapes. Um, looks delicious. So... I I would definitely give it a whirl. You know, truthfully, there's really not a food that I wouldn't try first, I think. Yeah. I would almost try just about anything. Oh, is that it? That would be the great pizza. I think it that looks, looks fantastic. I mean, it looks lovely. And, um, you know, you get sausage and then the great. I, I would definitely, I feel like I want to try that at the house. I will say this. I am very pro pineapple yeah. pizza. You oh, are? Yeah. Well, I like, like. Hawaiian pizza. Okay. We're just throwing pineapples in there with like other topping combinations I'm not as into. Right. But Hawaiian pizza I'm down with. So I don't mind a little bit of sweet in the pizza. Okay. So uh, it'd be kind of the same concept, right? So um, have, have you guys ever had avalanche pizza in, um, in Athens? Athens? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I have not actually, but I've heard it's fantastic. I know people who drive there just to get a oh, pizza. And, and they I, do take and bakes. And I, they'll do any pizza they have as a take and bake. So I if you're just in Athens, you can grab one. I've been making a trip to Athens just to get Avalanche for the past year. Well, they have um, one that has pineapple on it with some other weird stuff. And it sound, it, like it is so good. It is so good, that and that's fantastic. not me at all, but it's fantastic. I, I'm going to bring up their menu. They the, Avalanche the, Pizza yeah, The is, names are so fun. Yes, their names are classic. <laughs> There's you like should the, advertise. That's right. <laughs> I know, as we give them free plugs here. Well, the, but their names are so, pretty they funny. They probably don't need well, us to. Well, they... They do advertise. Um, <laughs> Just so, not here. <laughs> well, not to call anybody out, but they had those Hooper Awards that Pete was so proud of how oh, well yes. we did. Yes. Well, one of the other newspapers in our region uh -huh. won an award for best advertising for their what? Avalanche pizza oh. ads. <laughs> You know what? I that do remember that. Yes. That's funny. Are not designed by the people that designed the ads at the paper. They are designed by the fine folks at Avalanche Pizza. Controversy. Oh, oh I did not know that. Yeah. But their ads are very good, though. Hmm. They, they do a fantastic job with their yeah. advertising. So name some of their pizzas because they're, they're uh, don't they have like a yeah, Godzilla? So, right. and... so when you go to the menu on their website, the first thing you do is you either click on the llama for pizza or the alpaca for everything else. Yes. So we okay. want the llama for pizza, right? Yep. All right. Uh, let's find their special. Okay, yeah, you have signature to go to pies. Their signature ones because they are um, very unique. <laughs> which one, the, okay, the, the hidden kimchi or crouching kimchi hidden chicken pizza. <laughs> it is delicious marinara, a half pound of melted mozzarella and provolone, fresh roasted chicken, crunchy cashews, Korean kimchi, yep, uh, which is like pickled cabbage, yes. sweet mandarin oranges complemented by a fabulous salty sweet taste of Japanese teriyaki sauce. Hmm, interesting. I mean, that's how all their pizzas are, though. You're just, they're like... Yeah, kimchi's like a fermented. Yeah, the the uh, I was a teenage vegan werewolf pizza. <laughs> uh, freshly blended marinara, fresh baby spinach, hand diced red onions, artichoke hearts, 
sweet roasted red peppers, fresh sliced mushrooms, and you can also get the pizza without cheese if you are yeah, vegan. If you're vegan. What's the one that has the pineapple on it? Um, well, the one that's nothing but meat, it used to be called the Nugent. Yeah, the, the Nugent. Nugent. But they changed it to the Stranglehold because <laughs> Ted Nugent may not have liked them advertising with his name. Yeah, we used to get the Nugent sometimes. Um, well, we might, they may not have been talking about Ted. Could have been any Nugent. I know, there's a lot of Nugents out there. Okay, that's right. so their Hawaiian pizza is, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, the Mount uh, Kilauea. Hawaiian. It is red sauce, secret spice blend, Ooh. succulent ham, crispy roasted bacon, sweet Hawaiian pineapple, real shaved cheddar, mozzarella, and provolone. Oh, I'm yes. so hungry. I know. Isn't there a Godzilla? Yeah, there's the Godzilla. What's which, it? So the Godzilla is the one. pizza that they won the best pizza in the USA award for. Yeah. It is uh, spinach marinara melted feta cheese, fresh golden roasted chicken, sweet sun-dried tomatoes, mozzarella, provolone, and it won Best Pizza in the USA at the World Pizza Championship in some town in Italy whose name I cannot pronounce. There you go. Wow. All right. Enough free plug for Avalanche Pizza. Yeah, but, know, I, but no, it's really, it's, it's unique. I'm not it's a good. huge fan of chicken on pizza. I mean... I'm okay I mean, I, with it, but like a, I mean, I'm okay with it. It's yeah. just not my my favorite. I don't know. Like, I'm just kind of like the normal pizza kind of person. Really, I'm an any kind of pizza. Well, kind they're of person. No, they're regular pizza is also very good. Yeah, like if you're yeah, a you can just get normal. There, you can run in and buy like a slice at lunchtime. Right, and they also have like New York style pizza. Mm. That they just had like the last couple of years. The nice the real fold big, over. Yeah, the yeah. real big pieces that you fold over. Yeah, it's good. yeah. very good. Yeah. But, of course, you know, in Athens, they've also got Goodfellas Pizza just a few blocks away. Sure. So you got to... There's definitely there's some There's a lot of good options well. down there. You got Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So, but you know what they don't have? Grape pizza. They don't have grape pizza. Yes. Just saying. Yes. They probably do. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they did. It's coming. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> oh, pizza for breakfast, pizza for lunch, pizza for dinner. All of it. I, I no problem. All the time. Yep. All right. So, you all will be happy to know. So, I found the most anticipated movies of 2021. So, some of these, you know, as they were supposed to be released, of course, during all this sure. madness that they got postponed and whatever. So, um, actually, this week, uh, Raya and the Last Dragon will be... Um, and that's kind of a follow-up to... Like, it's a Disney Plus movie, I think. It, it's showing at Tri-City right now. Also. Is it? Okay. I assume it's showing at um, Silver Screen 7, too, but okay. I don't know that for a fact. Very good. Uh, on May 7th, Black Widow. And that's, uh, there's like, half these movies are Marvel movies, so it just right. goes mm -hmm. on and on. And that's the one with Scarlett Johansson? Um, yes. It's Scarlett Johansson yes. and David Huber. Florence the Pugh, David Huber, yeah, Rachel Stranger Weiss. Things. Yep. Then, I don't even know how these continue on, but I'm like sucked into the franchise <laughs> is F9. The ninth installment of the Fast and Furious franchise. You know, I saw, I think, one and two, and that was enough for me. What? I mean, as much as I do love <sighs> Vin Diesel. <laughs> they are so good. I can't help it. I just, like, I'm obsessed with them. Um, the movie will follow the crew of Daredevils as they take on the younger brother of Vin Diesel, a deadly assassin with a serious grudge. Now, Who's I didn't even know. Vin Diesel's brother? I don't, let's see. Who is, is it is Vin it? Diesel? <laughs> you know he's playing he's both being, characters. He's playing his evil character. He probably is. It's just him with a mustache. <laughs> I don't, you know, it doesn't, it does not mention, it only mentions the normal cast. It doesn't mention any of the. Well, you know Vin, how jealous Vin Diesel is of how popular The Rock is. Right. Yes. And he's angry that The Rock is like. They've kind become of. Become the star of the Fast and Furious movies ahead little, of him. So, you know, yeah. Vin Diesel's looking for his chance to outact The out Rock. Outact The Rock. Yeah. So, I did, you know, it's kind of weird. They've never mentioned Vin Diesel having a brother before and as far as right. I know in any of the stuff. So that's bizarre. 
But anyway, it is coming out uh, in May. Oh, John Cena is Vin Diesel's brother. So James Wolf just said that in the comments, and I, I remember oh, hearing that. Okay. Oh. They both, okay. They both kind of have heads that look like a potato. Yeah, they do. They're just very thick. <laughs> very thick. <laughs> They're very thick. <laughs> um, so John June- Cena doesn't quite have the voice, though. No. Like Vin Diesel, I mean, I could just look at him all day long. He's, mm-hmm. he's all right. Did you know that Vin Diesel is the vo- voice of the plant monster in Guardians of the Ga- Galaxy? I did not. It just says, I am Groot. Yes, I did know that. Yeah. Yes. That's Vin Diesel saying, I am Groot. I am Groot. Even when he's a baby, it's still Vin Diesel, like talking <laughs> in a baby voice. <laughs> That's funny. I've never seen those movies. Oh, so. those are the best movies. Guardians, Guardians of, the, of Galaxy. the Galaxy. So good. Okay. Funny. I'll funny have to movie. Watch those. Like if you're looking for a are they Marvel movies? Action movie yeah. that um, has superheroes, but it's also like kind of well, it's, just it's heavy fun. on like nineteen like seventies nostalgia too. Okay, seventies yeah seventies and early eighties. How many of them are there? Very... Well, there's two technically, but they cross over. Then with the other Marvel yeah. movies. Too. They intertwine. Yeah. All right. Uh, June eighteenth in the Heights. An adaptation of Lynn Manuel Miranda penned Broadway musical In the Heights tells the story of a young bodega owner in New York with a dream of closing the shop and moving on, and it goes on and on from there. Talk about a talented mm-hmm. person. Yeah, uh, yeah, that and that's the play he wrote like a few years before Hamilton. Before won, Hamilton, yeah, he won a Tony Award for it. And it's just not as well known, but right, but very good. So that that will be really really cool. Then. One of the most polarizing figures in all of Hollywood, Top Gun Maverick. Agreed. I think I'll pass on that one. July 2nd. (laughs) It's so hard for me because I love Top Gun so much. But Tom Cruise, I want to pinch his head off. Can't do it. It's cringy. You know what is really cool about that Top Gun movie that's coming out? You know, we're so used to seeing, like, you know, spaceships and things like that in movies, and it's all computer animated. Right. They like, strapped big old cinema cameras to fighter jets. Right. And like, they did these stunts for real. In fly these planes. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, it's, I mean, in that regard, it's really cool. You think about Top Gun, and, like, they flew the planes, and they, you know, it's really a thing. And Tom Cruise does a lot of his own stunts. Oh, he does. Yeah. Have yeah. you seen that? He gets hurt stunt? all the time. Yes. Yeah. Have you seen that? I can't, Edge of Tomorrow, I think was the name of the movie, where yes. they do a skydiving thing and yep. he did it all for real. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, but what's he's... even more incredible is not only did he do it for real, the cameraman did it for real and he was going backwards the entire time holding a camera like strapped to his helmet. I hope he got paid very Just well to do that. Is crazy. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, that's even crazy. funnier. I can't remember who the co-star was, but he did not do it for real. <laughs> he is computer animated in and the shots with Tom Cruise look amazing. And right? the shots with the other guy look silly. And then you've got right? like the yeah, the computer yeah. guy. I will say Tom Cruise goes all out. Like yeah. he well, it, and I think that's like, you know, you teeter on, on the line of insanity and brilliance, and brilliance. And I think that he... Well, I, if you look at figures throughout history, there's a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But Top Gun Maverick, um, not a lot of plot specifics have been shared, but it will see Tom Cruise's character engage in more Air Force adventures as he helps train a new group of recruits. Um... The movie will hit theaters on July 2nd, which is kind of fitting right before Independence sure. Day. Sure. Um, Val, Val Kilmer's in it, which terrifies me because he has not aged well. Um, some of the old cast, Ed Harris is in it. So, yeah, there's some some of the other folks in it. Um, you think see. the reason that Tom Cruise has aged so well is that he's, like, sucking the life force out of Val Kilmer? Maybe. It could be. I mean, that would explain a lot. Tom Cruise is like eight, aging in reverse, and Val Kilmer is aging at twice, <laughs> like the rate at twice the speed, person. and and gaining weight at twice the speed. Um, Shang Chi and the Legend of Ten Rings. That's it's another, another Marvel, Marvel. Yeah, yeah, movie uh, that comes out on my birthday, July 9th. Um, so that is a Marvel movie as well. 
Uh, oh, oh, James Bond, No Time to Die, October 8th. Gotta love that. Um, the theme song is performed by Billie Eilish. It does star, speaking of don't mind looking at him all day long, Daniel Craig as speaking, James Bond. Speaking of guys with heads that kind of look like a potato. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I think it feel, I feel like James has a different perspective than what we do. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, you say potato, we say, say potato. potato. <laughs> For sure. Touche. Yes. Um, it follows a retired Bond re- reuniting with an old friend to take down a threat. Shocker. Okay. So, here's a question. Who has been your favorite James Bond? Oh... I mean, I think Daniel Craig has done a fantastic job, but I think, um, you know, your old school James Bonds have been Sean Connery, just Sean Connery, James Bond. Yeah, I mean, Roger Moore. Yeah, I think they've all, in their own right, been amazing. I was always a Pierce Brosnan fan. Pierce Brosnan growing up, loved Pierce Brosnan, so I did enjoy the Pierce Brosnan era. Speaking of not bad to look at as well, right. I mean, they've all been certainly beautiful physical specimens of men, and you know, it's just that's what the sure, nature maybe of Roger the movie Moore was. was my least favorite, though. Mm-hmm. Kind of boring, yeah. maybe. But yeah, I'll, I could handle another Daniel Craig movie for sure. Absolutely. Um, November fifth, The Eternals will star uh, Selma Hayek, Angelina Jolie, Kit Har- Harrington, and Gemma Chan. Um, it's another Marvel movie. That's all I have to say about that. Kit Harrington's in that one? Mm-hmm. What does he what what does he play? It doesn't really say. say. Then on November eleventh, are you ready for this one? Ghostbusters Afterlife. <laughs> so th- this is directed by the son of the uh, director of the original two. Yes, yeah, so okay. it follows and it has the original cast members in it. Okay. So and it has kept it super super secret. Yes. To what extent they are in it. The new movie follows a single mother and her children after they arrive in a small town and discover their supernatural family history. Um, so Bill Murray, Sigourney Weaver, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, Annie Potts is also in it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I it's so funny you forget about that she's in there, right. but um, yeah, and also <laughs> Carrie Coon, Phil uh, Wolfhard, and Paul Rudd in it uh, another tom cruise mission impossible seven see that's a franchise i've seen the first and second one and never never watched another one after yeah, that now I've, i will say i haven't seen any i of those. the mission i do enjoy the mission impossible movies as much as i hate to say that <laughs> well there there's a lot of plot twists and stuff so yeah. they're fun to try to keep up with what's happening right um and then that stars of course tom cruise Haley atwell which is you see the one that is she the one that he was dating oh, I don't know. during all this? Yeah, there was a little scandal there. Then Spider-Man No Way Home on December 17th. Of course, another Marvel movie. And then on December 22nd, for all of you nerdy nerds out there, The Matrix 4 oh, will, for that. of course, well, star Keanu Reeves. Living Reed, in The Reed. Matrix and that. I'm considering that we might be living in the matrix and COVID-19 was just a virus in the matrix. It was just, a, there's, there's just a lot of explanation now as to what's going on. Did so, you see yeah. the deleted scene from the office that they released to promote the Peacock streaming service where Jim convinces Dwight that he's living in the matrix? No. no. I love that. <laughs> Look it up on YouTube. It's pretty funny. Okay. That's oh, that hilarious. Would be fantastic. So funny. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Did you bring anything up to talk about or? I tried, but I was having computer issues. So it there, happens. So yes. So there is, did you hear about the doctor in California, surgeon, who had a traffic violation and was called to court but in California, they were doing all of like those traffic violations. They were all doing them all by way of like video conferencing. Sure. So you could, if you had to, you know, if you had a speeding ticket or some kind of moving violation or hit another car or something, you could 
go to court Mm -hmm. by way of video conferencing. The court um, representative would call you, get you all set up, and then you would go in front of the judge. Okay. So this surgeon in California appeared Thursday for his Sacramento Superior Court trial held virtually, um, but he was dressed in his surgical scrubs and had a patient on the table behind him. No. Yeah, like he was in surgery. I mean, in traffic court, in surgery. Yeah, I mean, there's a point when you have are taking multitasking too far, right? I'm thinking the Hippocratic oath does not include going to traffic court, right? <laughs> so yes, so the California, um, you know, medical board is now bringing that up for review. I would think so. <laughs> How would you like to be like the patient and find that out? Well, they, yeah. So they made sure that you couldn't see the face of the patient, but the patient was definitely like under and they were ready to go under the scalpel. People, I don't like, sometimes I just wonder, and the court representative even said like, doctor, are you, are you sure that you are ready to, for this court appearance? He's like, oh yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, like no, not okay. There, that's a screenshot from his uh, appearance in court. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. I mean, you'd have to think that the people in the room with him are like, "What is he Just doing?" Just you can be really smart and have no common sense. Well, and that's. A, I mean, obviously, you're very brilliant to become a doctor and pass all of the things that you have to pass to get to the position where he is right now. Right. So, how do you not have that that? mechanism in your brain to figure out that that's not a good idea. The difference between book smarts and common sense. <laughs> right. Again, teetering on that line right, right. of insanity. I feel like that's a power move, saying I, yes. I'm, I'm, above. I'm too important to be, you know, having to appear here. Right. I have I have this to do and nobody else can do this. Right. Yeah. I think you're, you're probably right yeah. with that. Yeah. A little testosterone rage in there. Okay, so in a real life into the blue movie. Have you ever seen Into the Blue? Yes. Paul Walker, Jessica Alba, probably one of the sexiest movies of all time. You have not seen Into the Blue. No, I you go home to, tonight and you watch men. Into the Blue. I don't want to watch that. <laughs> I'm well, telling that's why you. Why I know about all the Marvel movies? <laughs> and you the said Matrix. Paul Walker's in it, right? Paul Walker Just is tell in him it. it's a Fast and Furious sequel. <laughs> there yeah. You go. No, listen, I can tell you that the first time Jessica Alba walks into the screen, they will be sitting down full on attention because she wears a bathing suit the entire time and is looking fine. Just let me tell you about that. So it's really good because you've got like the Paul Walker and the Jessica Alba. So it's like girls and guys really like it. But anyway, the whole movie comes to basically they live down in the Bahamas and they're kind of treasure hunters and they find this, you know, wreck. But then when they find this wreck, they also find a wrecked drug plane that's like by the wreck. Oh, okay. And so it's them fighting these drug dealers that are trying to get their, their drugs back and them just wanting to deal with the wreck, but they found this drug plane. So now they're running from the drug dealers and all this stuff. So, All in bathing suits with beautiful people. (laughs) So anyway, Florida Snorkeler is out the other day off of the Florida Keys and found 25 bricks of cocaine wrapped up in a bale of black plastic and tape. And the cocaine is worth over one and a half million dollars and it was just floating in the water Um, what do you do run (laughs) run away i mean if you're an entrepreneurial sort the money starts hello ding 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 i've watched breaking bad and weeds and i'm just saying so in as part of into the blue, one of the the people in the movie steals some of the cocaine and then tries to sell it. And of course, the people they tried to sell it to was the very person in which they of stole course, it from. Right? So that does not end up well. <laughs> so yeah, if you watch that movie, you're, that would go through your mind and you'd be like, 
I'm just going to call the police. And But, um, well, so, yeah. Well, my first thing would be, like, I don't even know who to sell this. <laughs> who do I right. sell this to? Who do I call? I mean, <laughs> you'd be selling it for, like, 25 bucks or something. You just have to find your Jesse Pinkman. I mean, do you, That's right. I mean, do you put an ad in the paper for that? Or I don't like, know. Go on Craigslist. Go on Craigslist. Just ask to go on a ride-along with the sheriff and just see what comes <laughs> no. up. Could you take out a classified ad on the radio? <laughs> um, no, but anyway, this person uh, did um, contact the authorities and did turn it over to the authorities. The Border Patrol um, responded and retrieved the drugs. Um, and there is some buddy out there that is in some serious trouble. It sure. probably doesn't have fingers anymore, I would guess. Oh, there may a million dollars, a million over a million and a half. It may be more than just fingers or a head. <laughs> like their head is probably on a fence post somewhere. Oh. So yeah, not good. No. But and let's see. Last but not least, Chipotle has teamed up. I know you're going to run out and buy this with Elf Cosmetics. <laughs> This is weird. It's as weird as it sounds. For a food-inspired collaboration. And they it is launching on March 10th. It's a $16 eyeshadow palette with 12 shades inspired by Chipotle ingredients. Rice, pinto beans, sofritas, hot salsa, and yes, guacamole. Ugh. Each palette purchase comes with a coupon for a free order of Chipotle's chips and guac. It will also feature a lip plumping gloss in a shade of red hot salsa, as well as accessories, including an avocado shaped makeup sponge set and a makeup bag designed to look like a Chipotle tortilla chip bag. What, a paper Thank bag? You. I mean, there is a point when you can take collapse too far. Um, I'm, that's kind of where I'm at with it. I mean, guacamole colored eyeshadow is lime green. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just not... And I saw a picture of it. I don't know, James, if you can find a picture well, of it or not. So, but. yeah. So, I mean, your colors are like a tan, red. Red. Sa like a sagey, green, like yellowy green. Green. And, and, and then like an off-white. Yeah, and I mean, if you think about, like, pinto beans would be, like, a burgundy color almost. And none of those are eyeshadow colors. So I'm super confused about it. Um, it will be available at elfcosmetics.com, chipotlegoods.com, and on the virtual shopping platform, NTWRK. What is that? I have no idea what that is. Anyway. There she blows. Wow. That little cup of guacamole is not helping it any. No, <laughs> no. And look at the like the baby avocado like fake sponge thing. Like I I are any of those colors colors that you put on your eyes? Well, some people do. Doesn't mean they should. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I probably did in the sixth grade. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, there you go. So if you are a Chipotle fan and you want to look like a Chipotle bowl all the time, there's now's your chance. <laughs> oh, somehow I just lost my appetite. Right? <laughs> all right. I uh, want to thank Mark Carmen and all the gang at Carmen's Used Cars and Trucks and Vans and all the other stuff that he sells out there. Visit their website at carmensusedcars.com. If you're looking for a vehicle and they will help you out. And also, don't forget the filling station, the store Broadway and Penn and Wellston, and the newly remodeled Quick Stop, home of the crispy, crunchy chicken, and probably the prettiest convenience store right now because it's all brand new mm -hmm. with a new beer cave and the whole nine yards. Pretty cool stuff. So, all right, anything else? I don't think so. Okay. Well, are you happy coming Friday up before and, you leave us? Oh, I will. For okay. Sure. All right. But just happy Friday and everyone make sure that you be nice. 
we wear our shirts just as a subtle reminder to be nice. Jen right. says, be ice. <laughs> <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Wait, wait. There we go. Right there. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Um, good luck, Lady Vikings, tonight. Right. Girls, you go kick some butt as you have no all year long. And uh, we're so proud of you. And we know you can do it. All right. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Sunshine in the forecast. Maybe not as warm as it looks outside, but that's okay. Get some sun. Get some vitamins on your face this weekend. And we'll see you right back here on Monday. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.